stoichiometry. Woohoo! The balanced chemical reaction equation tells us the ratio of molecules or the ratio of moles of molecules that are reacting and their form. We could look at this as particles, two S's, represented by these little red balls here, are going to combine with three O2 molecules, represented by these little green pairs of atoms, to form two SO3 molecules. If you look at these particle diagrams, you can see that whatever's on the left-hand side of the arrow, two big red balls, is over on the right-hand side of the arrow, two big red balls. Conservation of mass. We've learned about that before. So this is one way to represent this equation with pictures. But you know, this is not going to be very useful to us. if We have to draw a picture every time we want to think about how much SO3 is going to be made from two S's. So instead, we're going to have to learn how to do this mathematically. We're going to use these stoichiometric ratios, that's the ratio given to us in the balanced chemical reaction equation, to predict how much product we can make in moles, or to predict how much of a certain reactant is required to make the certain amount of product, or any other numbers that we need to predict in the reaction equation. So let's just jump into an example. How much water is going to be produced when I burn 25 moles of natural gas? In a stoichiometry problem, the first thing that you always, always need is a balanced chemical reaction equation. So natural gas is CH4, and if I'm burning it, I'm combining it with oxygen. What will my two products be? You said CO2 and H2O. You're right. And then I've got to balance this thing. Remember, when we're trying to balance combustion reactions, we start with the C. Ah, one on each side. Easy peasy. And then we go to the H. Oh, I'm going to have to double my H2O to get my H balanced. And then i got to figure out my O's, which is the tough part. I look at the right-hand side first, and I see that I've got two O's in CO2 and two O's in H2O, making a total of four O's. So I've got to put a 2 in front of my O2 to get four O's on the left. Once I've got my balanced reaction equation, I'm just going to take the number that was given to me in the problem with its unit, 25 moles of CH4. It's going to get very important in these problems, people, that you write down moles of what. Don't just write down moles. Because there's a lot of different chemicals in this problem. And then on the far right-hand side, it's factor label problem. I'm just going to write down the units that I want to get, which is moles of H2O. The question was, how many moles of H2O can we make when we burn 25 moles of CH4? Then I'm just going to set up my uh, factor label. I want to get rid of these units, moles of CH4, so I put them on the bottom so that they'll cancel out. And I want to switch to moles of H2O, so I put it on the top. Then I've got to figure out what numbers go here. And this is why we need the balanced chemical reaction equation. This equation is going to give us the numbers that go here. So I just take those coefficients straight from that equation. That equation is basically saying I'm going to get 2 moles of H2O for every 1 mole of CH4 that I burn. I put that in there. This little ratio here is often called the mole bridge. If you're going from one mole, CH4, to another mole, H2O, you're bridging those two. Or it's called the mole ratio, that's what I usually call it. Or if we want to be fancy, it's the stoichiometric ratio. Ooh. Once I've got it in there, I cancel out the units. I've left with moles of H2O. I punch 25 times 2 into my calculator, or I do it in my head, and I get 50. Then we gotta think about sig figs. No, no, not sig figs. Yeah, remember these numbers in the middle here, the two moles of H2O for every one mole of CH4 are exact. We're not saying, oh, about two H2Os for every one CH4 might be 2.1, might be 1.9. No, we're not saying that. Those are exact numbers. They've got an infinite number of sig figs. So when you're looking at the sig figs in this problem, it's actually easier because you don't have to worry about any of the numbers in the middle. 
you just look at your first number, which has two sig figs, and then you make sure that your answer has two sig figs. In this case, I've got to put a dot after the zero to show two sig figs, because 50 without the dot only has one sig fig. Oh, sig figs, we love them! Okay, let's try another one. How much Cl2 gas will be needed for seven moles of Fe to react? You know, you might not want to use any more Cl2 gas than you absolutely have to because you may have learned in history class. This is mustard gas. It's really nasty stuff. So you just want to use the bare minimum. You wouldn't want to use extra. You guys, I want to point out here that we're not predicting the amount of product this time. Instead, we're predicting the amount of another reactant. Or you might have a problem where it says, I want to make this much stuff. How much Cl2 should I use? You know, they could give you any chemical in the equation and ask you for any other chemical in the equation. It doesn't have to be on the left and the right hand side. The ratios are good everywhere. So uh, again, I'm going to need a balanced chemical reaction equation, and I don't have one yet. So get that balance. And then I'm going to write down what I've been given. 7 moles of Fe. And on the right hand side, I'm writing down the units on what I want on my answer. And then I put this ratio in here to get those units that I want on my answer. And then I put some numbers in there. I get these numbers from the balanced chemical reaction equation. And then I just do my math, figure out my units. Yep, they're coming out right. And then I look at my sig figs. Only two. 7.0 has two sig figs. So I round my answer to 11. I think that should be enough for you guys to do your homework. So uh, good luck with that, and I will see you on Monday.